My name is Dr. Harvey Tenenbaum and we're going to demonstrate to you the easiest and most precise way to take swab samples for the purposes of paternity tests. This is simple and straightforward. Most people have no problem, but we want to make sure that you get it right when you do it. Now, before we go through that simple process of swabbing the cheeks, I want to discuss one feature that's often overlooked. And that's something you may have ordered and may not have ordered called a legal chain of custody form. If the test you're doing is for personal informational purposes, you don't need it. However, if you think there's a possibility that in the future you want legal proof of the validity of the test now or to strengthen the case on the results, you need a legal chain of custody. It's a simple form that we've developed over the years and you can purchase online, make as many copies as you need, one for each participant. What this form does is it takes a DNA test and gives it legal validity because a witness, anybody, and it can be a friend, neighbor, anybody not related to the participants is going to watch or themselves take the samples from the participants in the manner that we're going to be showing in a minute. What's important is that they are signing a statement that first they absolutely know the identity of the people being tested. Either they've seen photo ID or they know them personally. That's half of it. The second just as important part is they take possession of the samples after they're taken and placed in an envelope put them in the mailing envelope, seal it, and personally put it in a mailbox or take it to a courier. So the two questions in law that give strength and validity to a paternity test are answered. We know the samples came from the people they were supposed to come from and no one could switch or tamper with them after they were taken. If you think in the future you're going to need it, you should order it now because once the test is done, you can't revert to a legal format. If you're just doing it for personal information, you don't need this form. Thank you. Now we're going to proceed and demonstrate the proper way to take oral swab samples. First, don't eat or drink anything for at least a half hour before you do the test. And if you're cutting it fine, rinse your mouth with clear water and then you're ready to go. We don't want any foreign substances in the mouth. When you open the kit, you're going to find a couple of packages, one for each participant, of cheek swabs. You're going to open them. Let me get the ones that come with your kit. This type here. Take one out. Work in a clean, confined area, uh, free from extraneous substances that could possibly contaminate the kit. Now, take the swab. You're going to be placing it inside one cheek, swab number one, rubbing up and down for 15 or 20 seconds, and then placing it in an envelope on which you've already marked the name of the person who's donated those swabs. In. I'm rubbing it up and down, turning it slightly as I rub. Perfect. I'm now taking the swab, opening the envelope, placing it in there. I'm repeating the same process on the other side. So you're taking the second swab, rubbing the inside of the other cheek, and after 15 or 20 seconds, placing it in the same envelope. Now, you're going to leave the envelope open. The reason is we want air to partially dry the swabs because partial drying is very beneficial. It prevents any microbial problems from arising. You let them partially dry, which takes, I'd say, 20 minutes or so. Then, not with saliva, a little moisture, water, seal this envelope. You have a perfect set of DNA swab samples and you're going to get a clinically precise result. 
you take both envelopes, one from you and one from the other party or whatever number of other parties there are, you place them in the mailing envelope, put them in the mailbox, send them in by courier, whatever you prefer, and in short order, you'll get a 100% clinically precise answer to the question, is the person tested in fact the biological father of the children he tested with? That's all there is to it. Stick to that. You won't have any problems. You'll get a clinically precise result. And as I said, if you need it, you think you'll need it in the future for a legal purpose, my advice is to buy the legal chain of custody form. Have it. Make as many copies as you need, one for each person. If it's just for personal information, you don't need it. Thank you very much for your interest in the subject.